with DMS3 TV here today. I have a desk covered in headphone pads, and why is that? Because we are reviewing the Fostex T50 RP Mark III. This is completely bone stock, and I have a lot to say about these, but as always, I'm gonna start off with a build. These are not expensive headphones, and I don't expect crazy, crazy build quality out of them, but they are pretty consistent with the T50 RP Mark II. T20, T40, all that. It's almost exactly the same, uh, but the T50s are vented right here. This is open a little bit. So main features of this, they, I mean, they're mostly plastic. Uh, this is, I believe, some kind of fake leather up top on the headband. It's not super, super well padded, but luckily it is relatively thick. Well, probably thicker than it looks on camera. So it doesn't, it doesn't hurt the top of my head too much, but I like a lot more on T50 mods where they actually put a band in here to help support the top of your head. It's relatively springy. I've been told this is metal inside, so you can bend it if you need to kind of increase the clamp on it. Uh, the sides right here, they just slide up and down. The tension is controlled by a screw right here on the inside. And your wire does run through the headband and they are exposed here on the side. Uh, they are braided, so that does kind of help, but I would worry if you snag this on something, that might seem like a bit of a weak point. Uh, and the cups do, I mean, they move around like this. They're not, you know, super locked into place. I could also see this as a potential weak point, but apparently people don't complain about it too much. Apparently it's not too much of an issue. So overall, the build is very, very minimalist. They're very simple. Uh, there is a connector on one side, a twist lock for a three and a half. They come with two different three and a halfs. They come with an orange shorter three and a half to three and a half cable and a shorter three and a half to one, or sorry, a longer three and a half to one quarter inch cable. And these are technically listed as studio headphones. I don't see them really used for that too much. I don't really imagine anyone using them for that. That's what they say on there. The big point of these headphones, and the reason why they're so popular, is because people like to modify them. This is like the build your own headphone base right here. And the reason I say that is because they are very easy to disassemble and they're very easy to change the sound of. And before I get too much into that, I do want to say the stock pads on these are useless. I mean, there's no point in leaving the stock pads on these. If you're buying a set of these, I don't know why you would ever want to leave the stock pads on. With the stock pads, my ears touch the inside where the plastic is. There's there's basically nothing there. They're just, I mean, you can see there really, there's just not, look how little this is compressing. There's really nothing here. It's, it's just like, it's like this much pad and then it's just plastic. So, and speaking of which, the pads on these, they literally just pull right off. You just slide them out and there's a ring around here where the edges of these pads just fit right in. And then you can see the driver right there. There's that. The thing is about T50s is you, know, you can put different dampening materials in them. You can put different pads on them. You can do all kinds of things to make them more comfortable and make the sound suit your needs. So right out of the box with the stock pads on them that you shouldn't be using, they are the most flat and boring headphones pretty much that I can imagine. Uh, there's no sound stage, but at the same time, there's no vocal presence, which I don't even, I don't even understand how that's possible. They're not super bright. They just have a lot of like upper mids, um, but it seems like your ultra highs just kind of aren't really there either. There is some bass, but it's mostly mid bass, kind of muddy. And then you put pads on them and they come to life. You can put alpha pads on these and suddenly you have, you know, all your treble back and you have, you know, really strong low end and a little bit wider soundstage. You can put Ori pads on them and they have, you know, powerful, powerful highs and vocal presence. And you can put, you know, uh, lambskins on them and then suddenly they have a wider soundstage and better sub response. You can do all kinds of things to these with just pads. And you can, like I said, you can improve the comfort with a headband, but these really, they change so much based off everything you do to them that it makes sense as to why these are so incredibly popular, not only for, you know, consumers to buy them and, you know, make their own changes to them, but in modding communities as well. I mean, what headphone has been modified and resold more than the T50 RP? There might be one out there that I don't know of. If there is, let me know, but I'm pretty sure that this is, this pretty much takes the cake for the, the headphone that everybody mods and resells. And that being said, it's hard to evaluate the sound of something like this because there's so many different possibilities. I mean, you know, there's modifications for these that go for well over $500. And this is, you know, around $150-ish dollar headphone. So it's something you can't quite put your finger on. I, I will say though that sound-wise, if you're buying pads for these, you're buying these for around 150 and getting, you know, another $50 worth of pads or something like that, 
or if you're getting these for less, if you can get these for less than 150, that's a better deal. But if you're buying these and getting pads with the intention to modify them and do your own thing, so then maybe put a headband in, maybe put pads on them, whatever, and get your own cable, all this stuff. I mean, you're you're looking at a decent value because these can really, with the right modifications, perform well up into very high dollar ranges, which is crazy to think for a headphone at this price. And you can tell where they cut the corners. They could definitely cut the corners on the pads because no one buys these to use with the stock pads. It's, you just don't because stock, they just sound awful. So these stock pads are, I mean, it's, it's obvious that they're just a placeholder for whatever people who buy these are going to do to them. With that, I think this was a really smart move for Fostex. I think that they realize after the Mark IIs that everyone is just buying these to modify them. So they kept almost everything the same. Uh, the really, the only thing I know of that's changed between these and the Mark IIs is the driver paper and the pads now have this little dust cover in the middle and that's it. But I mean, there's more to it than pads. You can take, say, the foams Find them. You can take the foams from HD 650s that go underneath the pads in there, put these on here and put alpha pads on and suddenly you have base cannons, like ridiculous base cannons, like stupid out of this world levels of base. Um, I mean, it, the possibilities are really endless and I that's why I really like these. It's one of those things that I just, and I normally I'm not a big fan of something where you have to make a lot of changes out of the box. You know, usually I think that a, something should sound as it's intended to out of the box. You know, you shouldn't have to go and make tons and tons and tons of changes to make it how you want it. But in this example, I actually really like it because these are intended for you to make changes to them. These are intended for you to customize them and make them your own. And for that, I absolutely love the T50RP Mark III. Are they the most phenomenal headphone on the planet? Do they blow everything else away? Absolutely not, but they can. You can do incredible things to these. It just takes experimentation, trying different pads, trying different dampening methods, different things. You might even go in depth, you might, you know, open the cups up, you might make new cups, you might do all kinds of crazy stuff. Look what ZMF has done to T50s. I mean, that's, that's an example of just like insane levels of detail going into making these wooden cups and all this other stuff. I have no idea what goes on inside those headphones to make them do what they do. And actually, I need to get in touch with them. I really hope to review some of their T50 mods. Uh, and I do eventually, they are eventually sending me some uh, Icon or Atticus. So we'll see how that goes when those actually get here. That is actually a completely original one though. Those aren't T50 mods. It just kind of got me on that subject from ZMF. But really that's what it boils down to. Stock T50s are deceptively underwhelming, but have a lot of potential. But the stock pads absolutely don't. So guys, thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure that you stick around because the next video coming out is the review of the 1964 Audio Custom In-Ear Monitors, the A6. So I know I've been talking about that a lot, I've been promising it. It is the next video coming out on my regular release schedule. I might put something else in the middle um, just for fun, but we'll see. I've been working on some side projects and kind of trying to make room for things, so uh, we'll see what comes into the, into the new routine. But until then, guys, peace.